You know, I was gone for a pretty long time, so I've been trying to get reacquainted with current events. I've been watching a lot of news shows, reading a bunch of gaming sites, and even diving into some forum posts to see what my fellow nerds are thinking. So, against my better judgment, I've been staring into the abyssal depths of the World of Warcraft forums. I've been meaning to talk about my thoughts on WoW for a while now, and since the devil's got me again, I figure now's a good time to do it. I have a lot to say about WoW and Blizzard as a whole, but for now, I want to hone in on the game itself. And if you're not acquainted with WoW lore, don't worry too much. If you're any kind of fantasy nerd, this video will still have some value for you. There's a lesson here. Somewhere. So here's the news. In an upcoming patch, Blizzard intends on removing various class restrictions that have been present in the game for years. In a few days, we'll all be playing alongside wild combinations like Lightforged Warlocks, for example. As I speak, the forums are peppered with posts decrying this change as the death of WoW lore, a final nail in the coffin for a beloved universe. On the other hand, you have numerous people ardently defending this decision, saying that gameplay should always come first, that more choices are always better, and that the lore won't be affected by such an insignificant change. In the middle, you have a group of players asking for compromise. If any species can be any class, then surely Blizzard can provide some lore-friendly explanation for this, find a way to make this fit into the world better. Personally, I don't fall into any of these categories, but I do have a strong opinion nonetheless. And given the fact that you've already clicked on this video, I'm just going to assume you want to hear it. So, as I've been known to say, let's take a look. First off, I really want to shut down the argument that this shouldn't matter at all to anyone. To the people who feel that way, I need to remind you that WoW is, ostensibly, a role-playing game. Of course people are going to get invested in the consistency and integrity of the lore. We can argue which class-race combos are lore-friendly and which aren't, but it's absurd to expect people to ignore the world-building of an RPG. It's the foundation upon which the fantasy is built. Sure, in some RPGs the backstory is more important than others, but it's ridiculous to ridicule those that do give a damn. RPGs have always been a haven for those who hyperfixate on fiction. This is a space for nerds who want to express themselves as nerds. You're allowed to get really into it. That's why it's there. To an extent, of course. To the hardcore story nerds who see this as a violation of basic lore and a cheapening of the world, I want to be very clear. I understand the issues you have with the removal of class restrictions. I understand being so invested in a world that you learn to appreciate its lore-friendly limitations. I also understand the people asking for compromise. Let any race be any class, but at least let them start in the appropriate cities. A Blood Elf Druid should be getting trained in Thunderbluff by the Tauren. A Night Elf Warlock should start in Northshire among like-minded humans. Personally, this is what I would suggest if I were still invested in WoW's world building. But here's the problem. I am no longer invested in WoW's world building. Neither are the writers, at least not the version of WoW I fell in love with. So here's my take on this entire issue and the larger issue with WoW's lore. To the people upset by this latest decision, to the people who are still invested in Warcraft as a setting, to the people who are finally fed up with Blizzard's disrespect for their own lore. Have you considered not giving a fuck and flat out rejecting what Blizzard does to the story? Because I know some of us still don't want to admit this, but WoW's story is dead. Look, we all have different opinions on when it happened. Some say it was Burning Crusade when they randomly decided to make Illidan and Kael'thas villains and reverted the Blood Elves back to generic High Elves. Others say it was Warlords of Draenor, where instead of going back to Outland, the second most important planet in the series, we traveled back in time to an alternate reality of the same planet. Why? Well, so we can bring back old characters and kill them again because Blizzard had no idea where to take the story back then, and instead followed whatever was most marketable. 
Was it when the book Chronicles came out and retconned core tenets of the universe? Maybe it was during Battle for Azeroth and Shadowlands where the writer's additions to the story were so catastrophically bad that it retroactively ruined the entire storyline from Warcraft 3 all the way up to Legion. A time span of 14 years, I should note. So we all have different opinions on when it happened, but more and more people are coming to the same conclusion. At some point, WoW's story fell off a cliff. It's over. We're doing fun fanfiction now. Everything, down to the most fundamental cosmic forces of the universe, can and will yield to game design and the whims of the current writers. Best we can hope for are some good adventures, maybe some decent characters here and there. But as a universe, Warcraft is broken. I know, I know. Some of you might think I'm being harsh and overcritical, that I'm speaking out of spite for the universe, or maybe I'm being a bit too condescending to WoW's hardcore fanbase. Well, here's a plot twist. I have been a World of Warcraft fanatic since I was a child. I literally grew up on RP servers. WoW is in my blood. It's baked into my DNA. From the moment I stepped into Azeroth, the universe sucked me in immediately. Sure, it was cheesy pop fantasy, but it had heart and a hidden depth to it that instilled a sense of mystery and wonder. It also had some genuinely unique ideas that still inspire me to this day. Wow, at its best, is high fantasy creative fuel. I challenge you to play this game without coming up with an idea for your own story. So I'm not saying this because I look down on WoW or the people who love it. I say this because I know what it's like to fall in love with a fantasy setting. I know that creeping feeling you get when you know the story is going in the wrong direction. I know what it feels like when the bubble bursts, when the world you grew up with becomes unrecognizable. And hey, if you still don't believe me, let me tell you my own story. Alright, so get ready. We're going to need to dive into some Warcraft lore real quick, and that is not something I thought I'd ever have to do again. Dear Lord. Okay, so when I was really into WoW, my main was an arcane Draenei mage. In the old lore, arcane was pure magic from the nether, and in Warcraft, magic is chaotic, corruptive, and addictive. Unless you're channeling magic through a divine source, you risk madness and mutation with every spell you cast. But instead of embracing the chaos like warlocks do, unleashing the raw madness of the Twisting Nether in a practice known as Fell Magic, mages apply logic to the illogical. Their goal is to control chaos and to keep it from corrupting them to achieve the pinnacle of power without losing your mind in the process. That's what being a mage is all about. This was a fundamental aspect of Warcraft lore, beginning in the early RTS games and surviving until Chronicles confused the matter. You can even find old interviews where Chris Metzen talks about this. As a kid, this is what set Warcraft apart from other fantasy worlds. I love the idea of magic as this forbidden fire, something mortals were meant to borrow from the divine but never truly wield. To steal that fire from its source is to risk your soul, but the benefits can be limitless. So, with this in mind, I loved the idea of playing a Draenei mage, an ancient alien wizard who mastered the very magic his demonic kin failed to control. This tied deeply into his character, and into my perception of the Draenei as a whole. I was fascinated by their passion for arcane magic. Sure, they worship the Holy Light, but they're still drawn to the forces of the Nether that originally tempted them. But they've mastered that temptation, and they've become some of the greatest mages in the cosmos. This was core to the love I had for the Draenei, and for my own character. I loved that crazy old man. Then Chronicles came out and somehow both overcomplicated and oversimplified the magic system. 
Now, arcane is a force of order, and fell magic is its polar opposite. Even though it was arcane magic that ruined the Netherstorm, even though it was arcane magic that drew the Legion to Azeroth, even though Archimond himself referred to Dalaran as stealing our fire, you know, because arcane and fell magic are the same thing, even though, right now, you can find an arcane wraith boss named Anomalous who literally shouts CHAOS! No, arcane is order now. Get wrecked, little Draenei. You were never mastering your people's greatest flaw. You never proved your superiority to your demonic kin. You spent thousands of years doing jackal. So what I'm saying is, I too have been driven crazy by careless retcons in the past. I know how things that might seem minor to an endgame raider might ruin in our peers' entire understanding of the world and the characters you've grown to love within. A light-forged warlock is like a fire-breathing hobbit. It just doesn't make sense. I get it. I am not looking down on the hardcore nerds who hate the recent changes WoW has been making to the lore. I'm one of you. Alright, deep breath trip. So this was my personal breaking point. The moment I saw this graph my investment in the world of Warcraft died. So you know what I did? I quit. For years. And if this is your personal breaking point, then I suggest you do the same. But here's the thing. For better or worse, I'm back now. For better or worse, WoW isn't going anywhere. And I'm not letting Blizzard ruin the story for me anymore. I'm not going to let them ruin my enjoyment of a world I grew up with. No matter the story or universe, there's always going to be too many cooks in the kitchen trying either to co-opt the world for themselves or to milk the story for as much profit as possible. It's just the nature of big business. How many beloved universes have been stolen and exploited by corporate idiots who don't understand the golden goose they bought into, who can't just slow down? invest in their workers, and give them all the resources they need to make quality, inspired content. If you're going to let bad corporate decisions ruin your investment in a popular fantasy world, then pretty soon you won't have any left to enjoy. If you still want to love WoW, if you still love the environments, the gameplay, the moment-to-moment -moment adventures, then you either need to accept that the lore is going to keep changing or you need to reject the lore and replace it with your own. I'm role-playing in my own little headcanon now, my own vision for where WoW's story should have gone, and I'm never looking back. When art is released to the world, it doesn't truly belong to anyone, not the author, not the audience, and certainly not Bobby Kotick. You are not beholden to this husk Blizzard is parading around as the Warcraft universe. The setting has gone through so many changes and reinterpretations at this point that you may as well choose your own. It may sound like I'm being cynical here, or that I'm actively encouraging the fanbase to give up on WoW's story. Well, first, I'm not, and second, I am. WoW is still a great video game. I'm having more fun with Dragonflight than I've had with the game since I was a kid. The environments are breathtaking, and it still sparks my imagination with every step I take. But if you want a coherent, consistent universe, you have two options. One, you can play classic, where the lore is solidly established, or two, you can embrace the madness. Use your imagination, make modern WoW the way you want it to be in your own headcanon. Share your ideas with your friends, your guilds. Establish your own house rules, house lore, based on the version of Warcraft you and your friends like best. Whether Blizzard likes it or not, WoW is still a role-playing game. So don't feel defeated. Get creative. Well, you asked for my take and you got it. Jeez, talking about WoW lore makes my brain itch. I'm gonna go take a nap. Uh, hey guys, Trip here. If you're wondering what took me so long to make this video, then I should have you know that this is the third or fourth video I've tried to make over the past few weeks. 
Long story short, every time I got close to finishing a video, something hilarious and catastrophic went wrong. And by the time I got it fixed, my creative passions had moved somewhere else. This is really something I'm trying to get better at as I'm trying to become a real YouTuber. You see, gang, your boy Trip has the passion of a wolf and the intention span of a flea. I also still have a lot of stage fright and anxiety when it comes to completing a video and actually uploading it, which saying it out loud is so funny to me because I am by no means a shy person in real life. I don't know, something about, ah, whatever. So to peek behind the curtain a sec, one of the things that kept happening when I was trying to make videos was my editing software, which for the time being, it's Sony Vegas. I am very quickly looking to move on from it. Uh, you can look this up right now. Sony Vegas is having a very odd problem with the latest patch where, yeah, you just can't open the software if you're connected to the internet. Took me a while to figure that out, and it's still an issue. I need to unplug my ethernet cable every time I want to open up my editing software. So uh, yeah, that was a bit of an impediment, but mostly I'm just getting back into the swing of things. I'm hoping to increase the cadence of video release by a lot. I told you guys in uh, an earlier video from, I think like a month or two ago, that I eventually want to be making at least a video every week. We are obviously not there yet, but I'm going to try and very slowly increase the speed of my uploads. And I just need to accept that it's okay to make a simple video. I tell you, the scope creep I go through with everything I do is honestly hilarious looking back on it. To the one or two of you who have been asking how you can support me now that the channel's no longer monetized, well, maybe get back to me in a couple weeks on that. I'm thinking about reviving my old Patreon page, which I made when I was younger and stupider and didn't really have any idea how to run something like that. But before I can commit to reviving the Patreon, I'm going to need to make sure two things can happen. One, I can make consistent content for you guys on a regular basis that you will want to watch. And two, that there are those of you out there who actually would support the Patreon. <laughs> but yeah, that is something I probably want to work towards. I was serious about that nap. I have been going to the gym every morning lately and oh god, am I tired. Oh, but before I go, I've settled on a consistent schedule for my Twitch streams. So yeah, unless otherwise stated, I'm going to be streaming every single week on Twitch under the name Psycho Trip Streams every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come watch me if you want to see me play video games in the moment and have even more chaotic thoughts about them. Fun for the whole family. It is not fun for the whole family. Do not bring your mom. One more thing. I want ideas for videos. Tell me what news stories you want me to cover. Send me cool video game easter eggs you want me to check out. Tell me what games you want me to check out. At the end of the day, I always want to make the videos I want to make, but I am so open to suggestions. So leave a comment down below. Oh, and hit that like button, subscribe, hit that bell with the fury of a thousand suns. Love you guys. See you next time.